Hello there, my crime and crafting friends. Welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs at Night. Super happy to be here with you. Uh, if you are new to this true crime series we got going on, all we do is we chit chat about a true crime story while we're getting some crafts done, or you could just be hanging out in bed, having a good time with us. I usually do premiere these, which means one, I'm live chatting with you guys about these crazy stories. Two, it's ad free while we are on the premiere. And uh, three, it's fun because you get to talk to other people that are interested in the same things you are. So um, I'm excited to tell you about this story. Um, if you guys are into this, make sure you're liking, make sure you're subscribing. And to my haters, go ahead and comment away because it helps this video and it helps this channel. All right, you guys, okay. so uh, the craft that I'm making, it's not really a craft. I wanted to try out more of these Choc Couture stencils that my girlfriend, Teresa B. DIY sent me. So I cut up some, um, some wood and I'm just going to, you know, kind of play around with the colors and the stencils. And that is what I'm gonna be working on today. So you guys, this story, I actually, found this while skimming through Hulu this weekend and it was actually on the travel channel I believe it was and it said that it was Halloween stories so and I think it was like because they were creepy stories not so much because they happened on Halloween but my eyes and ears were glued to this story it was just so creepy so eerie that like I just I could not peel my eyes away from the TV screen. And it's so crazy how, you know, when you're like really into something, just how like your memory works a little better, you like pick up things faster because right away I started researching this, like literally right after it was over, I was Googling stuff. Um, this creepy story is like Edgar Allan Poe, if he was alive, he would have taken this and written an epic poem about it that's how creepy it is. Edgar Allan Poe would have loved it. Okay, you guys, I'm ready. I've tried this already like five times and I keep telling myself like just for the head, like you're talking to your friends. Like I love chatting with you guys in the premieres and I think I get so up in my head. Like I already like painted this and started it over like four times and I'm like, oh, these are your girlfriends hanging out. Like just chill out and tell them the dang story. So let's try this again. <laughs> okay, you guys. So this story is based in the 1930s, specifically 1931. Now there is a man by the name of um, Count Carl von Kassel Tanzler. Now he wasn't really a count. He gave himself that name when he moved to Key West, Florida. Um, we are just going to call him Tanzler throughout this story because his God-given name was Carl Tanzler. Uh, so Tanzler, he worked as a radiology tech in a local hospital and he, I don't want to say he was a quack because they did say that he, he said he had a lot of degrees. He was an intelligent man, um, but there just was something off about him. Well, one day a young woman and her family, the young woman's name was Elena um, Elena Malegro de Hoyo, sorry if I butcher that, she was a 22-year-old stunning Cuban woman. Um, the They would say that Elena was really like the belle of the ball. She was beautiful. She always wore a rose in her hair and um, that even like tourists when they would come to the town would ask to take pictures of her because of her stunning uh, beauty. Well, when she comes into this hospital, Tanzler sees her and is reminded of what his aunt had told him long, long ago, that one day he would meet this dark haired woman and she would be the love of his life. So right when Tanzler sets his eyes on Elena, he falls madly in love with her, madly, passionately, obsessively in love with her. Now, at the time, 1931, uh, there, there was nothing to help tuberculosis. 
Uh, people were passing away very quickly from it. And Tanzler had told Elena's family that he could help. Now, he was saying he could help with basically experiments. And her family figured, why not? What is it going to hurt? So he, in the comfort of her own home, he paid out of his own pocket for all of these machines to help her. He um, tried like uh, ra um, what am I? Uh, radiation over her entire body. He tried anything and everything to get Elena healthy. Now, during this time of trying to get Elena healthy, again, remember, he fell madly in love with her and he expressed this love to Elena and even had asked her on multiple occasions if she would marry him. And Elena declined several times. Okay. Well, and let's keep in mind too. Remember I said he's 46. She's 22. This was like, he was 24 years her senior. So, I mean, not that that really matters, but mm, okay. Uh, so unfortunately, Elena would end up passing away. So when she passes away, Tanzler offers to pay for her funeral. He offers to build her an above ground mausoleum where they would keep her body. Now, what the family didn't know is that Tanzler was the only person with the key to that mausoleum. So for two years, he would go and he would visit the mausoleum. He would sit in there, bring her flowers. He would talk to her every single night. And he would even say that at, um, sorry, I was trying to find the song name, that he she would appear to him in a wedding dress. And she would sing the Spanish hymn. It's La Boda Negra, which is the Black Wedding. Now, you guys, I am going to insert the actual hymn uh, that I found on YouTube and the um, translation of the words because talk about like very eerie and like everything this song said after I read or sorry, hymn. All of the words, I was like, whoa, this is exactly, exactly what he did to her. Like, whoa. So I'm going to attach it. Go down to this description box and click it and listen to it. So again, Tansler is visiting her every night. She is singing this hymn to him. And with this hymn, he thinks that she is telling him, to take her away from this place, to take her home. So this is two years after Elena passes away. One night, Tanzler comes into the graveyard. He comes into the mausoleum. He has a toy wagon with him. I know, very, he's thinking ahead. And he removes the casket of Elena and proceeds to take her home. Now in his memoirs, he actually states that at one point he fumbled and that he thought somebody had hurt him. Now, fortunately for him, nobody did. Unfortunately for Elena, nobody did. So he ends up taking Elena home. So this is now, this is 1933. He takes Elena home and y'all, this is when this is when my face kept doing the, and I could not stop listening to what was going on here. So he takes Elena's body, um, we'll do this one, home with him. Now, he thinks that Elena is alive in his mind. He says that she's talking to him, um, but because he is so in love with her, he decides that he is going to bring her back to life. And it's almost like a really, really creepy version of Frankenstein. Not that Frankenstein's not creepy, but this is like, like, I don't know. It reminded me of Frankenstein. But 
he is convinced that he can bring Elena back to life. So he states in his memoir that her skin was decomposing. Remember, this is two years after her body was buried. Her body is decomposing and he says that he can see that the maggots were settled into her face, eating her flesh. So he removed Elena's skin, obviously by hand, and he even talks about just like how gently he treated her and how he took his time and was patient with peeling back her skin and um and that like some of the parts were still very stuck that he would put rags over them and let them soak overnight so that to take care of what was remaining <sighs> okay all right um so as he does this and he removes her skin he does several things to her body. Now, you guys, this is creepy. This is so bizarre. So just get ready. If you ain't ready, then you might want to click off. He takes piano wire and he puts it through her bones. So as her body is decomposing, it stays together. He also removes her eyes and replaces them with glass eyeballs. He stuffs her chest cavity and her abdomen with rags so that her body will keep its shape. He also, yes, it doesn't stop there, you guys. I told you, it just, it was like, what the what, what is happening here? He also, I told you, he was removing her skin because it was decaying. He got silk cloth. He dipped them in wax and Paris of plaster. And he would then start placing them over the form of her face and her body to create almost like this wax doll. Keep in mind, this is her actual body. It's not like he was making like a replica of her. This is her actual body that he's doing this to. And so he forms her face and everything else with these pieces of wax, Paris, plaster, silk, cloth. He treats her... He says that they were married. He treats her like she is alive. She even sleeps in his bed the entire time. Or I say sleeps. That's not, look, I'm even starting to believe she's alive. Um, he has her in his bed. And he also even says that like he puts up a, uh, what is it, marital curtain in between the bed so that she can have her own privacy. He's buying her new clothing, jewelry, and of course, he has to hide that smell that is coming from her decomposing body. So he goes out and he buys tons of perfumes, disinfectants. He does as much as he can pump her body with formaldehyde to also, you know, he, he's trying his best here, okay? And he then, this is now seven years. So in 1940, seven years with her body, y'all. Seven years he's had Elena's body, living with it, treating it like she was, they were married and taking care of it. Ooh, 1940, seven years later. How long did it take seven years? I do not know. But seven years later, rumors start. And I'm like, after seven years, rumors start? I, you would think rumors would start like right away. Well, people had started talking that he, um, 
people started talking because it was being noticed. Well, it had been noticed that he stopped visiting the gravesite one, but then people started catching on that he would continuously go out and he would buy women's clothing that he would buy bottles and bottles of perfume. And then the creepiest thing of all is a young boy um, says that he saw Tansler, hold up, he saw Tansler dancing in front of his window with what looked like a life-size doll. So, uh, I, you guys, I'm just like, really, after seven years? years, seven years, people start catching on to these weird behaviors and stuff. I, I blows my mind. I don't know. But Elena's sister, Florinda, is PO'd because these rumors lead to them saying that Tansler has Elena's corpse. So her sister, Florinda, marches over to Tansler, Tans, did I even, Tansler's house and is knocking down that door. And Tansler opens it and she says, I'm going to call the cops. You know, where do you have my sister's body? And he walks her into the house and he shows her her sister's waxed, decomposed body. So she calls the cops. Of course, Tansler is taken in. I have to dip in here just a little bit. Tansler is taken in. And a, what was that? I don't know. And he is evaluated, obviously, by a psychiatrist to see if he could stand trial in his hearing. It was stated that he was stable to stand trial, which, you know, I'm all about. I, I want people to stand trial for the crimes that they committed, but I find it super hard to believe that this was a stable man. I mean, all the things he did that he's living with a corpse and pretending like it's, she's alive for seven years. How can you be stably right in your mind? Anywho, um, so he is stable enough to stand trial. Well, the charge at this point is for, uh, let me see. I, I have it written word for word, wantonly and maliciously destroying a grave and removing a body without permission. When I heard this, I was like, man, how things have changed because re the, like just for maliciously destroying a grave and then removing a corpse without the permission of her family, I guess, like, what, what? So as he's awaiting trial, or I guess for his hearing, the case was dropped and Tansler was released. Yes, this is for real, you guys. He was released. And the reason he was released was because they said that the statute of limitations for the crime he had committed had expired. So he didn't get charged with anything. Ooh, nothing at all. Now, you guys, during this entire time, I should probably dry it instead, instead of trying to, you know, touch everything. <clears throat> during this time, what was I going to say now? Oh, crap. My mind, brain fart. Don't worry. I'll think of it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. So when Tansler, when Tansler gets arrested, the community is actually sympathizing with him. Let's take that one in for a little bit. Just take it in. Would you sympathize with somebody that stole a body from a family and then did all of these weird disturbing things to her I just, they sympathized with him the community said that although eccentric it was a love story it was 
beautiful be what he had been through and did to bring his bride back to life. Now, you guys remember, she he asked Elena. She said no. So it wasn't like it was they both were in love with each other and he was like, I will bring you back one day. Like, no, it was not like that at all. So I just kind of was like taken aback when it was said that the community sympathized with him. Now, the community, um, sorry, kind of dump stuff out real quick here so I can use the back of this. Um, so as Elena's body was taken in, she was uh, examined by physicians and then she was put on display at a local funeral home. You guys, you, I can't make this stuff up. I just can't make it up. She, this poor girl, like her, I don't even like, I don't, I didn't say like, I was like, was she put on display to maybe commemorate her or say goodbye to her? Because I find it hard to believe that her family would have been okay with this. I mean, it's, I don't know. But they put her on display. This poor girl who wasn't even able to rest in peace. They allowed them to put her I don't know what I'm doing, you guys. Oh, goodness. Those are horrible. Um, they were allowed to put her body on display. And you think about how Tanzler wasn't sick. You know, like how I was saying that he was sick in the mind. Well, over 6,800 people. Where are my scissors? Oh, they're right here. Over 6,800 people showed up to this viewing of Elena's body. And I'm just like, okay, we think that he's disturbed, but yet 6,800 people want to come and see what he had done to her body. I'm like, did people think like this was an art piece? Did like, I just, the whole thing is just so weird to me. I mean, obviously the story is very weird but then like how the community is you know sympathetic towards him after he did this to somebody's family member and then they put her on display i mean you guys this was even such like a big event i'm gonna say event that they let i'm like how do i get this um i probably put too much they let schools out early so that the children could come view the body as well. It wasn't even a natural looking color. It was sort of grayish white, very hideous. Uh, she had glass eyeballs and they just stared off into space. It haunted me and my little sister for weeks. We'd wake up in the middle of the night seeing the body it was a hideous sight and Tansler after the fact because remember he got released he did not get in trouble for any of this he was um he had asked them if he could have oh come on now let's see the first time I did this it didn't oh oh man that is not great it is bleeding all over the place. Ew. Okay, let's try a different one. Um, he does ask for her body back. And of course, thankfully, I, I mean, thankfully, they said no. And I'm like, I was kind of shocked because, yeah, you guys, this is a real life. I need to get up and get my wax. Um, I'm surprised that they didn't because I mean, they sympathized with him. They showed her body like it was really weird, but he did ask to have Elena's body back. They told him no. 
And then they did bury um, Elena's body in an unmarked grave so that he could not find her. Um, Tansler was said to have moved out of Florida, but before he moved on his way out, and this is just they think, um, somebody blew up uh, Elena's mausoleum. And it's even that travel channel that I was watching. I'll try and find out like exactly what it was. Uh, the like, I guess tombstone or plaque that was on her mausoleum. Uh, they have that up in a museum. So Tanzer ends up moving out and he ends up moving to a different part of Florida with his, are you guys ready? with his wife. He did have a wife. He had a wife and he had kids that lived in another country while he moved to Florida. So he moves to uh, another part and she was actually, they didn't live together. They lived near each other. And I guess his wife ended up taking care of him in his, you know, last years of life. And it was said that he did make a death mask of Elena. I mean, this guy was, he truly in his mind thought that they were together, that she was alive, that they were, you know, he, there's even like speculations that he thought that they were like going to go up in space and then, you know, the rays would catch onto her body and that she would magically come alive. You guys, it, it is disturbing. Well, he ends up passing away and it was said that he passed away. And this, this is all just like speculations, theories, things like that now, but some say that he passed away and was found lying on the ground with Elena's death mask near him. It was also said, what else, which one? Oh, I'll try this one. That, um, that he didn't like his obituary says that he was found, you know, um, dead lying on the floor behind like an instrument or something. So just speculations here. Some other theories is that Tansler switched out Elena's real body with a fake body before the cops could take it. Um, I don't know if I believe that because she was examined by physicians. So I would think, I mean, obviously we don't know how like decayed her body was or anything, but I'm pretty sure they would be able to tell if they were, you know, human remains or something else. So that was another theory. Now this part, you guys is disturbing. I'm going to say it right now. So just be prepared. Um, another Thing that came out was that, and I'm sure you guys are probably going to guess it with how disturbing he already is, but that he was a necrophiliac. And if you guys don't know what that means, that he was sleeping, having intercourse with Elena's dead body. Now, this actually came forward um, in 1975. One of the positions that examines um, Elena in 1940 when it happened, had stated that her parts were removed and replaced with things. Now, they did not, um, they say that this is just like a theory or like made up information because there were never any pictures of her examination. Nothing was ever written about it. And in 1940, when he was arrested, None of that was brought forward in the case against him. So people took this information and they were like, well, why are you coming out, you know, 35 years later and saying this is what was, oh gosh, I like just cannot get this right, you guys. That's how that one came out. So the whole thing didn't even show up. I know you could erase it, but y'all, I want chalk. I want it to be easy. I don't want to have to erase it. 
Oh, maybe I could like lay it back down and then try again. Let's see if I could do that. Okay. Um, sorry, this is, this is where we're crafting here. You guys tell me what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, I totally don't think I placed that in the right spot. <laughs> maybe I didn't let the wax like set up long enough. Maybe the wax is still... I don't know. Okay. Anyways, you guys, sorry. Um, so yeah, that was a, another theory that they had, but it was not ever proven, but you know what? I mean, you guys, I mean, come on, we're, we're having this conversation in the chat right now. I mean, for as disturbed as he was and for him thinking that she was alive and they were married and like how they had like a privacy curtain in the bed and stuff like that. Like I really wouldn't doubt that his mind didn't go there but I mean it wasn't proven so we don't know I also looked up because a lot of places that I was watching had said that um he had you know his he he wrote about these things in his journal and so I looked it up and he actually does on uh, that just made it worse look now I completely took it off Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Everybody loves chocolate couture, and every time I've tried it, I like cannot get the dang stencils to work. We'll try it again on this, but we'll probably be done with that by then. Um, so tell me down below what you guys think that uh, what you guys think of this. I really, I had to share this with you because it was just so. It was so eerie, you guys. I I was like, oh my gosh, this really happened. This is not like a, like I said, this isn't an Edgar Allan Poe story or anything like that. Like this was real life. This happened and I can't believe it. And now I, oh, I was saying his, yeah, he has his memoirs in a book that I found on Amazon and I totally want to buy it. I think I found a used one for like 12 bucks and I'm really interested in seeing like what he wrote about. He, it says that like he writes about like the conversations him and Elena had, you know, what steps he took, you know, to preserve her body, things like that. Yeah. I'm weird. Yep, yeah. I want to, I want to read it. I know that's weird, but I do. Um, let me know if you're into these like older stories. I know we do like you know, things that are currently going on and stuff, but things like this from like back in the day really intrigued me. This one was super strange to me, but you guys, I hope you had a good time here. I hope this was maybe a story you haven't heard of. And I just keep thinking this is a real story. You guys, this isn't like a, a, a tale that is in a book. This is an actual story that happened. This is an actual man. Elena's real. Like the whole thing really happened. Not like I'm sure, like I, I'm thinking of it like it never happens. I'm sure it's happened in other cases and stuff, but I just feel like my mind is blown. And um, go ahead and give me tips and tricks for this chalk couture because I don't know what's going on here. And if you guys love this, please make sure to share the videos. I could use all the help I can get with this. So if you're in true crime groups, if you have crafting friends that love the true crime, please make sure to share my video because it really helps. We need some light on this crime and crafting so we can get more people chatting up with us. Um, I hope you guys have a very good weekend. And I cannot wait to come back next Saturday. I think I have already another case in mind. And this one will be a little bit more recent because I was going to do that one before I saw this one. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to share. Okay, I'll stop rambling, you guys. Okay, so have a good weekend. Thank you for being here. And then, of course, I will be back Tuesday with a DIY video. Bye, y'all.